What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here from the quartering, from my remote location near the Beanie Compound. Beanie Compound adjacent. If you didn't watch last night, I was on Timcast IRL. I'll also be on Timcast IRL tonight at 8 o'clock. Um, and I'll be live streaming on my channel after the show with uh, all the juicy behind the scenes details. So I hope that I'll see you tonight for a pretty late live stream, I suppose. But there's some interesting news going on today. A rumor about Disney Plus viewership. Now, I have to say, you know, Disney Plus is currently in at least 95 million households. So this rumor is kind of hard to, to get behind, but it's possible. Certainly people could have Disney Plus and not be watching it. Um, or they might be watching other programs because there's a new rumor going around saying that Disney Plus viewership has tanked since Disney fired Gina Carano. Now, where, a lot, where is all this coming from? Well, I think it's really coming from Disney hiding the numbers. If you look here, um, as we saw with Falcon and the Winter Soldier, the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Disney Plus users question, quote, record-breaking viewership announcement. Streaming service did not disclose any numbers when it made its claim about the Marvel hit. Fans have questioned Disney Plus' decision not to disclose viewing figures following the recent announcement about the success of its latest series. Now, this is not uncommon in modern day cinema, and it kind of stinks because a staple of this channel was dunking on all the box office flops, but now that so many movies are getting released simultaneously on platforms like HBO Max or Disney Plus or Netflix, and they don't release numbers, we're never really gonna know um, how movies are doing financially. Falcon and the Winter Soldier, a Marvel a series starring Anthony Mackie and Sebastian Stan, debuted Friday, this is last Friday, with Disney announcing that it was the most watched series premiere since the streaming service launched back in 2019. Now, this is marketing speak, right? The, the platform is now much bigger than it was in 2019, so it's almost like, hey, there's 100 people in the room now, just the sheer numbers, things are going to go up. That isn't necessarily a sign of guaranteed increased interest, but it goes on to say that no specific viewing figures were even given. However, with Disney Plus simply saying that the series beat out WandaVision and season two of The Mandalorian to reach the top spot, I don't believe that it outdid The Mandalorian season two. Disney Plus is not alone in keeping viewing figures close to its chest. While traditional TV is monitored through independent rating service Nielsen in the US, streaming has never been subject to the same oversight. Netflix does not regularly release these viewership ratings, but often discloses audience figures for particularly successful series over social media, of course. However, the metric used to determine what qualifies, quote, watching a film or TV series is also a matter of debate. Netflix currently counts anything watched for at least two minutes of view. So if you watched the four hour Zack Snyder cut of uh, Zack Snyder cut, but you watch for two hours, that's the same thing to them as somebody who watched it all four hours, which is, of course, ridiculous. On Twitter, people question the opacity surrounding viewing figures of Disney and Wake of the Falcon announcement. You can see seven people watched premiere of Falcon and the Winter Soldier on Disney+, Plus, beating out the previous record of five for WandaVision, four for season two of The Mandalorian. When actual numbers aren't provided, I guess I just insert my own data. Here you see uh, Jackie Sharp. Don't worry, that wasn't your phone, everyone. That was mine. Uh, this is a useless metric. There is no viewing figures provided. So nice to see Disney Plus copying Netflix in that regard. These companies should be forced to say what their viewing figures are. You know, that's an interesting conversation to have. Um, and the Hollywood Reporter's Daniel Feinberg uh, is the one that, I mean, this person isn't just a nobody that roasted them. This is somebody from the Hollywood Reporter. Um, it's worth noting that Disney subscriber base has grown considerably over the past year, which could account for record-breaking viewership numbers in the latest outing. But that leads into a new rumor that Disney Plus viewership has tanked since Gina Carano was firing. Now, this is a hard one to swallow, but again, it's a rumor. Um, you could see uh, here, I think this is from Overlord DVD. Yes, it is. Uh, Who has been right about many things in the past. Uh, WandaVision did okay, rounding at about 7.45 million average viewers per episode. While that number could and will likely go up, 
It's too soon to tell, tell how much rewatchability the show has. None? None? He continues, but it's clear that this in no way begins to get close to the last episode of The Mandalorian, which at two weeks was sitting at 95 million households. 95 million. Overlord DVD would also detail that Disney's latest theatrical release, Raya and the Last Dragon, has fared poorly on the streaming service as well, saying, Raya the Last Dragon has also done very poorly according to the source, somewhere in the neighborhood of 3 million views. He goes on to claim that due to the film's poor performance, that Disney might lower the cost of their premier access films like Black Widow and Cruella. Overlord DVD notes it could be lowered to $20 to $25. This is also an important um, greed move by Disney Plus. So the releasing, so I can see, I can go to my local theater and I can see Black Widow, which I don't care about anymore, or Cruella, which I never cared about, um, for seven bucks. If I want to watch it at home on an inferior TV and an inferior sound system, I have to pay thirty dollars, thirty bucks. It's it's hilariously uh, greedy. And their and their justification is for well, you could have ten people over watching it. Yeah, but I don't, and most people don't. One or two people might watch it. Um, you could see, in the opinion of the source, looking at Disney Plus, maybe close to hitting a subscriber ceiling. Allegedly, according to the source, new subs are way down, almost 64% from just two weeks ago. He can, well, they probably have market saturation. They still have 100 million users. The source believes Corano's firing did substantial impact. Before the before that firing, WandaVision would easily get up to 5 million views on night one. After the firing, WandaVision episodes were struggling to get over 2 million, if this source is to be correct. Another source further claims that Disney has publicly announced that they will provide no more subscriber updates unless it's a milestone, and that's proof that it's slowing down. Well, I wouldn't say it's pr it's proof, but I would say that it, it, it certainly is possible. It certainly would be something I would do if I was trying to protect myself. Disney did recently claim that the premiere of Falcon Winter and Winter Soldier was the most watched Disney Plus premiere ever. In a press release, they claim that Falcon and Winter Soldier from Marvel Studios ranked the most watched series. Furthermore, they claim that Falcon and the Winter Soldier premiere joined Disney's premieres of WandaVision, and, uh, beat WandaVision and season two of The Mandalorian, the three most watched Disney Plus original series opening weekends to date. In Disney's Q1 earnings report released on February 11th, they detailed that they had 95 million paid subscribers to Disney Plus up from 26.5 million in December 2019. That's insane. However, that growth increase in subscribers and the overall average monthly revenue declined to 403 from 556 in 2019, a decrease of 28%. On March 9th, Disney claimed that they had surpassed 100 million global paid subscribers in just 16 months of its launch. Disney CEO Bob Chappick said at the time, the enormous success of Disney Plus, which has now suppressed 100 million subscribers, has inspired us to be even more ambitious and to significantly increase the, our investment in, in the content. Now he added, in fact, we set 100 new titles a year as a target. This includes Disney Animation, Disney Live, Star Wars, Marvel, National Geographic. Uh, Disney announced, announced their second quarter 2021 financial results will be announced in the webcast beginning 4 3rd p.m. on May 13th. So it'll be interesting to see how that shakes out. You know, I can't speak for anyone else, but I can, you know, I can speak for myself and I can say, you know, even though um, I canceled my subscription to Disney Plus, like at, before I had done that, I had almost no interest whatsoever in uh, opening that app after what they did to Gina. And I know I'm not alone, but do I think that you know, the 50 million users that are overseas even know or care about the Gina Carano thing? Probably not many of them. But if the rumor is true, I'm happy for it. And I hope it is. I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll talk to you again real soon.